While I'm able to give you my Elliott Wave analysis of Ethereum here for free, that's going to be changing in a few weeks. We're going to be providing regular in-depth Elliott Wave and technical analysis of Ethereum as a subscription at Pure Elliott Wave. When we begin that, we will offer a once-only grandfather rate for the first 24 hours. So click on the link below to sign up to our notification list. We'll give you advance warning of when we're ready to launch Ethereum and you'll be notified on the day also. For the YouTube channel, this means that when Elliott Wave analysis of Ethereum goes, we'll expand our regular free videos to include Elliott Wave and technical analysis of Solana, so you're not missing out. We will keep looking after you. Good morning everybody, this is Lara from Pure Elliott Wave with your Monday to Friday update for Bitcoin, Ethereum and XRP. Happy Easter everybody, I didn't publish anything on Friday because it was Good Friday. The previous all-time high back in November 2021 was 68789.63. This is crypto compare data. It might be slightly different from other data sets. This is what I'm working with. Bitcoin has closed on a monthly basis above that point. The close for March was 71312.91. We do now have technically an upward breakout on an upward month which does have push from volume compared to previous months. We have technically an upward breakout at all time frames now. This is very, very bullish for Bitcoin. Currently I'm expecting it to find resistance 71,500 and above that next resistance 73,100 and above that in previous uncharted territory just expect resistance at round number pivots so 75,000, 80,000 and so on. The month of March shows a really good increase in volume beyond the previous several months. Now I am aware that this volume is very light for over a year or so. I am very sceptical of this crypto compare data showing a huge drop off in volume. Other data sources do show a drop in volume but not to the great degree that this one does. I'm really sceptical here. So what I'm noticing here is a steady month on month increase. At the monthly time frame ADX has given the most bullish signal it has ever given from Bitcoin. The black ADX line has risen up from the lowest level it's ever reached. It's risen up from below both DX lines although it didn't manage to reach below 15 which would have been a stronger bullish signal. It is the lowest level it's ever reached. The positive DX line is above the negative. The ADX line is telling us at this monthly time frame there is an upward trend in a very early stage. There's such a long long way to go before ADX reaches extreme that is above 50 for Bitcoin. At the monthly time frame RSI is overbought but it normally will reach into overbought early on in a bullish run. If you look back at previous strong bullish runs and behaviour with RSI you will notice that it is months before the end of the bullish run that RSI will start to reach overbought and then it will get extremely overbought. I'm expecting RSI to continue higher for months to potentially touch this upper trend line. Now it could have one touch like it had for the high in March 2021 or it could have two touches like it had for the high in December 2017. So we could have a touch, a pullback and another touch. So just because it reaches up to the upper edge of this line doesn't mean the bullish run has to end. I'm going to be relying very heavily on my Elliott Wave count for Bitcoin to tell me when it's the best time for me to exit the purchases that I made a few years ago. And I'm going to use money flow in the same way. I'm going to look for money flow to reach up to the upper edge of this big channel. Along with volume increasing as price moves higher, ATR is showing an increase as price moves higher. I use this as a measure of volatility. It's important to take note of volatility of a market like this, especially because its volatility tends to be very extreme and volatility tends to increase to the upside. This is a market that forms exponential growth and parabolic growth curves and parabolic growth curves come with increased volatility toward the middle and the end. We're starting to see volatility increase. This is really bullish for Bitcoin. Weekly technicals for Bitcoin, the week beginning 24th of March has closed to a new closing high but not to a new all-time high but it has importantly closed above the previous all-time high back in 2021 which was 68446.32 so we do have another close above that point and now we have a little bit of consolidation in this area a bit of work to do before it can continue on up looking for resistance 71,500 and above that 73,100 pullbacks and consolidations are normal behavior within a bullish run and it's really good to see this little pullback this is a healthy bullish run 
Downward weeks have seen declining volume. The last completed upward week with that higher close has not seen a push from volume. That's okay, that's not a deal breaker. Cryptocurrencies can be weak off their lows. At the weekly time frame, ADX indicates the upward trend is very extreme, but it's not as extreme as it can get for this market. And if you look back at previous bullish runs with ADX on the weekly time frame as well, you will notice that it will reach very extreme to the early and mid phase of a bullish run. So this is exactly the look I would expect at this point in time from ADX. It can reach much more extreme than this. RSI is overbought but this can reach deeply overbought and remain there for a long time when this market has a bullish run. This is a very extreme market. Money flow is neutral. ATR continues to show a strong increase even as price is consolidating. This is very, very bullish for Bitcoin. At the daily I'm going to trace out now what looks like a pretty strong support and resistance zone. Price has been consolidating for several days with good resistance now about 71,500 and support 68,400. We need to see a break out of this zone, either above or below, to have confidence in the trend direction for the next trend. Now if it is below, then we might be seeing another deeper pullback to test support at 60,370. If that happens, I'm not going to be upset whatsoever. That's one of the bonuses of buying and holding for years. You're not worried about these small movements, and I... I strongly recommend it for a much calmer approach to a market with such high volatility and high emotion as this. If we do see a pullback to this area, that would actually be great. It would set Bitcoin up for the next strong bullish run. But what I think is actually more likely at this stage is break above resistance at 71,500. If it can do that on an upward session with push from volume, then I'll have some reasonable confidence it's on its way up. It still needs to break above resistance at 73,100 again at the daily time frame that has to be on an upward session, preferably with push from volume for real confidence. Now for Bitcoin it doesn't have to have push from volume for it to be a valid breakout because unfortunately if you look at the historical data for this it can have upward breakouts with weak volume. It's very annoying. When you see push from volume, you can have more confidence. Price is moving sideways in the identified consolidation zone with quite a strong decline in volume. This is absolutely normal behaviour for a consolidation. And it tells me that this is most likely a consolidation. It's not the start of a big bearish movement. I do not think we have a double top. I think we're in the early phases of a strong, very strong bullish run. And potentially the strongest bullish run we've ever seen for Bitcoin. That's what my Elliott Wave count expects. ATX still continues to decline. It's very nicely now in neutral territory. The DX lines are whipsawing. This is what ADX looks like when the market is consolidating a normal healthy behaviour within a bull market. RSI is neutral. There's a long way to go for a new trend to develop and before these guys get extreme. Likewise, money flow is neutral. For the short term, a little bit of a decline in ATR over the last few days. So there is now some weakness in this consolidation. At the weekly time frame, we're still seeing an increase in volatility. But for the very short term at the daily time frame, a little bit of a decline in volatility. And that is actually pretty normal during a consolidation. If I'd seen at the daily time frame a strong increase in ATR at this time, I'd be expecting an imminent upward breakout but because it's declining we might have a little bit more work to do before we see a breakout when we do I would expect ATR to start to show a strong increase now because I'm spending so much time on Bitcoin's technicals today I'm gonna be rather brief with Ethereum and XRP I did cover these guys in a lot of detail last week one day I did Elliott Wave detail for Ethereum and another day I did the same for XRP so if you want that level of detail for Elliott Wave you're gonna get it just look through my videos from last week. For Ethereum I'm expecting there's an impulse unfolding. I'm just going to show you my main wave count for this one. I expect the middle of the third wave could pass, could have passed. I'm seeing my new wave three beginning here. An impulse one, two, three, four, Five. I have a target calculated at 2 degrees, a small $4 zone. At 8134, minute 3 would reach 6.854, the length of 1. And at 8130, minuet 5 would reach 2.618, the length of minuet wave 3. 
Minuet 4, if it continued any further, may not move into one price territory below 2717.20. From this low, I've got to say that this movement up here looks like a really textbook perfect Elliott Wave Impulse. The only question is what degree to label it. I am expecting Minuet 5 to be a strong extension. It's really common for a fifth wave to end a third wave one degree higher, to be longer than the third wave and to be stronger. So that's why I'm expecting Minuet 5 to be longer than Minuet 3, hence the target zone. Ethereum also has a really small, strongly identified consolidation zone now, resistance about 3680, support about 3450. We need to see a breakout of this zone on a session with an increase in volume preferably to have confidence that the consolidation is over and the trend is resuming. If it's a downward breakout, then we might be seeing a short-term test of support at 3050. If it's an upward breakout, then on the way up, look for next resistance at 4100 and above that, 4200. I expect an upward breakout may be more likely than a downward breakout, but there's no way anyone can be certain of that. So you have to judge it on balance of probability. That's what I'm trying to do here for you. As price moves sideways, volume is strongly declining. This is absolutely normal to be expected behaviour during a consolidation, and consolidations are part of a normal healthy bullish run. ADX reached very extreme for the previous upward trend. It's now declining, telling us that at the daily time frame there's no clear trend for Ethereum. But remember, at higher time frames there is very obviously still an upward trend. So the daily time frame is looking at those consolidations and at this time frame that's not a trending market. RSI is neutral. Money flow is really nicely neutral today, now below 50. It's such a long way to go before ADX, RSI and money flow together reach very extreme. And like Bitcoin ATR is showing us some decline at the daily time frame as price moves sideways in a very small tight range and this is absolutely normal behavior during a consolidation so there's now weakness as the market pauses to gather strength for the next trend normal healthy behavior in a bullish run. This is my alternate Elliott Wave count for XRP. I just want to have a look at how this triangle is potentially unfolding. My main Elliott Wave count expects the pullback was over on the 20th of March for XRP but the alternate considers what if we're going to see a new low just for another test of support and I expect it'll probably be in the 54 55 cent range. My only concern here is E looks a little bit brief. Now here's the problem with Elliott Wave triangles and this is why I'm showing you this chart today. You've got to be really patient with them just like pennant patterns a classic continuation pattern, Elliott wave triangles are a little bit tricky. You have to be quite patient as they end, so we could have it complete here, but I think it might not be because, now not always, but most often, when an Elliott wave triangle completes, the movement out of it is usually pretty sharp and has quite a lot of strength. Not always, but most often. So with that, this is not a really sharp, strong movement, so it could be that the triangle is incomplete, and we could be about to get a little zigzag up for a few days for E and then a downward breakout. So this is also possible. Now I will consider that D could be complete here. Let's decompose it. And I'm considering that because this point is below this point. So if D is a little zigzag, it's got A, B, C, and C has moved a little bit below A, so there's no truncation. This could be a complete zigzag for D. So now we could need a little zigzag or maybe even a little triangle up for E to complete the whole structure. So be really patient with your Elliott Wave triangles. And within them, don't accept truncations. If this C had not moved below the end of A, I wouldn't be accepting that this could be a zigzag. C should move at or beyond the end of A to avoid a truncation. Just like the Elliott Wave Triangle, the classic technical equivalent pattern is a pennant and we could be seeing a pennant here. Now I'm drawing this pennant trend line along here. It doesn't have the same strict rules as an Elliott Triangle. If this lower pennant trend line is correct, then the breakout point is at 0.6222 and there is currently potentially in this current session a downward breakout if it can close below the lower edge of the triangle. If it does that with some push from volume then I would actually quite strongly consider this could be a pennant, we could be having a downward breakout. The target would be 0.4437 but I do think that's woefully far too low because there's pretty decent support in the 54.55 cent area and if we do see another pullback I would expect it to be very likely to end at that area at the deepest. 
what I expect is most likely is this pennant and the Elliott Wave Triangle are going to fail and we're going to see an upward breakout for XRP. But so far it's got a reasonable resistance area at 0.675 and some reasonable support at 0.60. We need to see a good breakout of that consolidation zone to have confidence in the next trend direction. As price is moving sideways and that potential pennant pattern volume is declining, most flags and pennants do come with declining volume. ADX is still giving us a very, very strong bullish signal for XRP. It's telling us there is an upward trend in the earliest stage. This is extremely bullish. And this is one reason why I expect it's an upward breakout is more likely than downward. I expect that pennant may very well fail. RSI is neutral, money flow is neutral and below 50. Such a long way to go before this new upward trend reaches extreme territory. This is an extremely bullish look on this chart for XRP. ATR continuing to show a strong decline. This is a sideways consolidation with an upward bias as ADX tells us there's a new upward trend. This is a normal behaviour during a consolidation, declining range, declining volume, normal to be expected behaviour during a consolidation within a healthy bullish market. And that's it from me today with your update for those three. I'm now in, oh, where are we? We're at the end of, we're at the edge of Loch Ness and we're making our way down through Scotland back into England, having a fantastic road trip. Scotland's been very, very beautiful, if very, very cold. So I didn't surf there, so we did see some stunning waves, but we just didn't have the equipment we needed. We got up there and realised we needed proper booties, not just reef booties and gloves and hoods, and we just don't have that. And we couldn't figure out any way, anywhere to hire it. So we were watched some beautiful waves but didn't surf them. Heading down to Bristol eventually to surf that wave pool which I'm actually really looking forward to. And thank you all everybody for your support. If you've made it this far and you haven't already please subscribe and hit the like button and make a comment because all of your engagement helps my little YouTube channel grow.